jot down one example. Give us an example from the story of internal conflict. Character versus self. Where a character has to figure out something and, and go to war with himself or self. Clearly, Rainsford's having to play that game all the way through the middle part of the story. No question, right? How am I going to survive? How about this one? Most obvious. Character versus character. Often this story has been given as the quintessential example of character versus character. Obviously, you have Rainsford versus Zero, right? How about this one? Character versus nature. Well, that's interesting because watch this. Obviously, you have the character Rainsford against nature as in the ocean. But how about this one? You have character Rainsford versus human nature. Right? That is to say, the nature of Zeroff and the nature of Rainsford himself, correct? Of course, character versus society, if you want to be literal about it, well, then obviously he's got the pack of dogs with uh, even holding on to them, so now he's got more than one guy coming after him. This is external conflict, no question, right? Okay. But obviously we also have that character versus conflict of an idea, right? Should I, how do I get out of this situation? Survival mode, if you will. Okay, let's talk 3A really quickly. We've mentioned, obviously, a number of texts. What is for you your favorite movie about a guy who has to, or a gal, obviously a character, who has to survive. Some students have said, you know, I like those TV shows where they put them on an island and they have to survive, you know, all those different kinds of experiences. Why are those shows so popular these days? I think that this story suggested as well. We as humans love the idea that other humans have to go through all kinds of challenges to survive. It kind of helps us to believe that we ourselves can somehow get through a terrible experience. Of course, let's say it out loud, life is about survival. And the most famous line made of the great German philosopher Nietzsche ever wrote, many students know this even though they don't know their Nietzsche, that which does not destroy me makes me stronger. That which does not destroy me makes me stronger. The great line, of course, from the German philosopher Nietzsche. So we've got all kinds of interesting games being played here. How about this one? What is your favorite line, uh, what is your favorite game that plays the same notion of a dangerous game, a contest of a kind? What's your favorite game where hunting goes on and trying to get away goes on? Of course, reading the stories in some ways playing the same game. Okay, finally, 3B. You knew the question was coming, so let's write it down. For you, a couple of questions. I want you to at least think about it, right? We say learning is the ability to ask these kinds of questions, so let's play this game. How about it? This philosophic question. Is it true that the world is divided up into the hunted and the hunter? Is it true the world is divided into the cat and the mouse? Or... As some have pointed out, the world isn't divided up into, three, into two, it's divided into three. For example, watch this. This is a line that comes from the film American Sniper, for those of you that know it, right? The idea that there is the wolf, right? There are sheep, and then of course there's the sheep dog. Those who are put on this planet to defend the weak those who cannot take care of themselves. That is to say, there's a third that's introduced. By the way, this idea actually comes from the great Marcus Aurelius. He's the philosopher that said, even though you can hurt someone because you're physically stronger, maybe you're smarter, you're more intelligent, doesn't give you the right to do so because all species on the planet understand are somehow symbiotic. We're all somehow together in this world and we have to take care of each other. Yes, right? And there's all kinds of stories about the significance of why we have to take care of each other. Because why? Well, you're not strong forever. That is to say, you may be a cat for a while, and you can jack mice, but sooner or later you get old, right? And sooner or later you're going to have to have somebody help you. And so there's this symbiotic nature um, of this text. Finally, what is your favorite part of this text? I like to ask this question. What is your favorite part of the text? Where do you think the climax of this text happens? And that all depends on which conflict it is that you're kind of concentrating on. Many have pointed out that the real climax of the story happens a couple of lines before the end of the story. Others have said, no, 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 it's kind of like a story with multiple climaxes, you know, depending upon where you're focusing in terms of conflict. Well, there you go. I like the idea of the title one last time. Take a look at it one last time. It isn't called Dangerous Game. It isn't called The Dangerous Game. It's called The Most 
dangerous game. And life is, of course, in the end, the most dangerous game, isn't it? The struggle to survive. And of course, we have two kinds of struggle, don't we? We have physical struggle, but we also have intellectual struggle, and of course, spiritual, emotional struggle to go with it. Well, there you go, an introduction to a classic story, Most Dangerous Game. I hope you've been challenged to think. Thank you.